Haiti, August 10, 1813. The heat is blistering. Far too warm to be stuffed into corseted lace and silk heels, but here we are. It's coronation day. A new duke is to be appointed by King Henri Christophe. This day is seen as a blessing to most, but a bore to me. As a dressmaker, am I grateful for the business and the opportunity to showcase my designs? Yes, but I must confess, I find these world affairs tedious, unnecessary. My people, my father, fought a revolution to free us, and for what? So the king and his friends may parade around in gilded carriages? Hmm. But it's a world my mother, Aveline, admires, longs for, if I'm to be completely transparent. And so, to please her, I've poured myself into one of the dresses I've made on this sweltering day when I'd rather be swimming more than anything. My mother and I draw nearer to the palace, sans souci. It is deemed by many to be the Versailles of the Caribbean. And while I've never been to France to confirm the comparison, even I must admit, our king has done it with style. You are now listening to Prestige the Podcast, Episode 1, Coronation Day. Leonie Bijou, stop lagging about. We're already late. We should be working, Mommy. You know we must repay father's debt. They've sent several notices. <laughs> I will not hear of such things on a day like this. Now hurry or we won't secure good seats. Ah, what is the rush, Mommy? We'll be shoving the back of the palace. At best, our view will be obstructed by an enormous hat. At worst, the backside of the king's footman. Commoners were permitted to attend only by the kindness of the new duke. We should be gracious to partake in any fashion. Oy. You know this day is important to me. <laughs> okay, then let us make haste. I was right. There are far too many people crammed back here. Pardon, pardon. Pardon, pardon. Oh, it's no use. We won't be able to see a thing. Hey, I thought you didn't care. I've been dragged here against my will. It won't be for naught. Okay, let's get closer. Wait. Look, up there. A space in the rafters. We'll have a perfect vantage point. But we don't know how to get up there. I shall find a way. Come, follow me, mommy. We aren't supposed to be wandering the corridors. The palace is in a frenzy. There must be a hundred servants scurrying about. No one will notice us. I hope so. Oh, look at that cake, Leo. It's as tall as you. <laughs> is that for us? Don't be foolish, child. That cake is for the celebration following the ceremony. Nobility only. Mm. It seems they have more than enough to share. One corridor in this palace could fit five of our dress shops. Indeed. Isn't it grand? <laughs> That's one word for it. Eh, hey, hey, eh, Leonie, see that door in the corner? It must lead to the rafters. No servant is entering or exiting from it. Mm. Okay, I'll go first and confirm the area is clear. Wait for me here, mommy. A man is pressed against a young maiden. Their hands explore each other's bodies, pulling, teasing. I can hardly tell where one ends and another begins. He covers her chest in a trail of light kisses. Perhaps I can escape unnoticed. They seem rather preoccupied after all. Cat, I've knocked over this. The sound shatters any chances of an easy escape. They also kill any air of romance. The girl stops, quickly adjusts her skirts, and runs down the staircase. Her simple linen dress proves she must be a servant or tradeswoman at most. She's embarrassed, flustered. I barely see her face as she flees, just a pearl-encrusted cross swinging around her neck. But the man has no shame. As he buttons his shirt, he locks eyes with me, his expression unreadable. Ah, your dress is quite beautiful. 
Are you a member of the royal court? Uh, I'm sure I would have remembered you. No, I only dress up with my mother. A dress shop? Does my occupation offend you? Surprises, not offense. You look to be above such things. I'm not above or below anyone. I'll just dispose of this vase I've broken and be on my way. Nonsense. I'll call for a footman to clean it up. It is simply a vase I can manage. I should not want you to miss the coronation. I prefer to not let others fix my mistakes. I am trying to help. In the time you spent calling for servants, you could have helped me. Even I can't argue that point. Here, <sighs> let me help you. That sound signifies the coronation is to begin. Apologies, but I truly must go. I'd expect nothing more from a gentleman such as yourself. You should not speak to someone of my rank in this manner. Perhaps the shock of the moment sharpened my tongue, monsieur. <laughs> this is the wrong staircase, by the way. Pardon? I assume you're sneaking around to find a better viewing spot for my father's coronation. Oh. Your, your father is the new Duke Milo? Yes, and I've been to this palace many times. At the end of the corridor, the last door on your left, that staircase leads up to the rafters. Uh, no, you are mistaken. I am not. But I offer you a proposal. You keep my secret and I shall keep yours. You have the grin of a man used to getting his way. I'm afraid I shall disappoint you. <laughs> From this vantage point, we can see everything. Hundreds, if not thousands of flowers line the Grand Hall of Saint Souci Palace. Birds of paradise, orchids of every vibrant hue, palm fronds four feet tall accented with peacock feathers. Golden columns frame this stage where the king and queen sit upon thrones. My mother's eyes are wide as the moon as she drinks in the spectacle eagerly. It seems a bit much. Too much is never enough. Mommy, do you see the queen's dress? The embroidery is exquisite. I should like to try something similar when we get home, though perhaps a lower waistline. You know I detest empire silhouettes no matter how fashionable they may be. Now you're paying attention. Mm, the things I could do if I had the resources. Ah. Don't tell me you've become a royalist at the first sign of luxury. Oh, Gade, Gade, look, Leo, it's him, the new duke! <laughs> My mother points excitedly at the procession. The royal priest holds an enormous golden cross overhead as he leads the new duke and duchess down a path strewn with flowers. Once they reach the king and queen, the priest dips his fingers into a bejeweled golden chalice filled with holy water. He does the sign of the cross over the duke, then finds his place behind the king. To every soul present, between these four walls, I thank you. This moment does not merely belong to me and my family, but to my fellow countrymen. Each of us has been affected by war. The youth may not bear the physical scars, but they see empty shares where their parents, uncles, cousins should sit. The blood that once stained the battlefield now sustains life. We stand on the shoulders of our fallen brethren, and their sacrifice shall not prove to be in vain. Now that we have broken the chains of tyranny, how can we stand idle as our brothers and sisters are sold to the highest bidder? With the establishment of a Haitian national currency, we will buy the freedom of those enslaved. Beyond our borders, we can be a place of refuge, not just for those across Haiti, but indeed the world. As our kingdom grows, we shall take our rightful place as a glorious example of what the future can become. <laughs> Even you cannot find fault in the Duke's speech, Leo. I must say, I cannot. Now, if he truly means what he claims, 
that remains to be seen. Come now, let's get back to the shop. Mommy, do you see this? That man, they're leading him to the guillotine. Keep walking, Leonie. It does not concern us. Who is he? He is the former Duke of Milo. Oh, but how could this be? He defied the king. Mommy, we should do something. We, we have to... You should honor the king's judgment on things that are far beyond your understanding. It seems you are trying to convince yourself more than me. Come now, you should not see this. No, mommy, but, but, mommy, Leo, I... Leo, we must leave. Look away. Mommy. From the heights of the southeast tower, we see what the crowd on the other side of the palace cannot. I close my eyes at the last moment, but I can still hear the sound. The blade, as it slices through the air, the loud thud that ended the former duke's desperate shouts. On that day, I came to understand that this palace is a place of great beauty and great terror, where your life can be elevated or ended in a moment's notice. This is the king's court, where people will do anything for prestige, no matter the cost. Prestige the Podcast is a Rainbow Media production. Today's episode featured Shane Montprime as Leonie Bijou, Gabrielle Barlatier as Aveline Bijou, Jean Charles as Emmanuel Celestin and Jobert Metalus as Louis Celestin. The podcast was written and created by Ray Benjamin and Alikins Planchet, produced by Joseph Fuentes, directed by Alikins Planchet, and executive produced by Ray Benjamin and Alikins Planchet. Our sound mixer for this episode was Joseph Fuentes. The sound designer was Alexis Adimora, editor and engineer Alyssa Midcalf with additional sound design and editing by Joseph Fuentes. The Prestige Podcast theme song was composed by Darnell Monestim. Our production assistant was Maya Cryer. Associate producers, Mech O'Neill J. Planchet and Shaquan Womack. Our team would like to thank Larry Powell, Sabrina Ortiz, Danny Craig, Sosnio Scabrai, Arnise Foster Hernandez, Tola Ozim, and Ralph Watkins. For business inquiries, email us at info at prestigepod.com and follow us on Instagram at prestigepod for more information and updates. Thanks for listening.